Today's video is super special because we are going to find the roots of this cubic equation, but without any random guessing or hit and trial, just pure logic and method. Almost all of the time, when we face a cubic equation, we start plugging in random values in order to find the first root, and then using that root, we convert the cubic equation into a simpler quadratic to find the remaining roots. But today, you'll see how we will be solving this, or, for that matter, any cubic equation without any guessing. For that, consider a general cubic equation of the form x cubed plus b times x squared plus c times x plus d equals zero. Now, in our case, b is minus nine, c is 25, and d is minus 17, right? So, as a first step, we assume a variable y as x plus b over three, or x plus minus nine over three, or x minus three. So, x equals y plus three. Now, don't ask why we are doing b over three only, because that takes us into advanced stuff involving symmetry and the depressed cubic form. Just know that this step helps remove the x square term and gives us a simpler equation to work with. Now, what we will do is substitute the value of x here in terms of y in this equation. So we get y plus three whole cube minus nine times y plus three whole square plus 25 times y plus three minus 17 equals zero. Great. Now let's expand each of these terms carefully. We start with y plus three whole cube. Using the identity a plus b, whole cube equals a cube plus three a square b plus three ab square plus b cube. We plug in a as y and b as three. So we get y cube plus nine y square plus 27 y plus 27. Next, we move to the second term, which is minus nine times y plus three whole square. Using the identity a plus b, whole square equals a square plus two, ab plus b square. We expand this to get y square plus six, y plus nine. Now multiplying this entire expression by minus nine gives us minus nine y square, minus 54 y minus 81. Now for the third part, we have 25 times y plus three, which becomes 25 y plus 75. And finally, we bring down the last constant term, which is minus 17. Now let's put all these together like this. We will combine the like terms. The y cube stays as it is. The nine y square and minus nine y square cancel each other out completely. For the y terms, 27y minus 54y gives minus 27y and minus 27y plus 25y becomes minus 2y. Now for the constants, 27 minus 81 is minus 54, minus 54 plus 75 is 21, and 21 minus 17 gives us 4. So finally, our simplified equation becomes y cube minus 2 y plus 4 equals 0. This is called the depressed cubic, which is a cleaner, simpler version of our original equation with no square term. Amazing! So here comes the magic. Suppose we generalize this depressed form as y cube plus p times y plus q equals 0. So here, in our case, p is minus 2 and q is 4. Now you know that we had this identity for a plus b whole cube, right? We can also rewrite this as a cube plus. Take three times a b as common from here to get three a b times a plus b plus b cube. Now take everything to the left side of this equation. We get a plus b whole cube minus three times a b times a plus b minus a cube minus b cube equals zero. Oh my God. I am having goosebumps right now. If I assume y equals a plus b, then this equation becomes y cube minus three times a b times y minus a cube minus b cube equals zero. On the other hand, we have this depressed cube. Now just match the terms. From here, 
we get that P is actually equal to minus 3 times AB and Q is equal to minus of A cube minus B cube or A cube plus B cube equals minus Q. Now we are going to do something clever. A B equals minus P over 3. Cube both sides to get A. Cube times B cube equals minus P cube over 27. Now substitute P and Q to get A. Cube times B cube equals minus of minus 2 whole cube over 27. Or this will become 8 over 27. And A cube plus B cube equals minus 4. Now from here, B cube equals 8 over 27 A cube. Substitute it here to get A cube plus 8 over 27 A cube equals minus 4. I promise this will be our last use of the variable, which is R equals A cube. So, this equation becomes R plus 8 over 27 R equals minus 4. Now multiply every term on both sides by 27 R to get rid of the fraction and simplify. We get 27 R square plus 8 equals minus 4 times 27 R gives minus 108 R. Now bring all terms to one side to form a standard quadratic equation. 27 R squared plus 108 R plus 8 equals 0. Finally, we have reduced a cubic equation, which was this, into a quadratic equation, which is this. Amazing! Solving for R, we get this and this, which in decimal form will be approximately this and this. Now, you know what? We would not need the decimal form of this R, and we could have directly taken the cube roots of the exact values, but that would make the calculations a bit messy and hard to follow. So instead, we'll take the decimal values just to keep things simple and understandable. But remember, this is just for ease of explanation. In a proper solution, especially in exams or proofs, we try to work with exact values as much as possible. Keep a calculator at your disposal now. First solve for a cube equals this value of r, which gives a as this raised to 1 over 3, which is roughly this. Also, b cube will be 8 over 27 a cube, or this. But hey, this is the same value that we obtained for the other root of r, and thus we always get the roots of r as a cube and b cube. So, b will be this raised to 1 over 3, which is roughly this. So, y equals a plus b, which turns out to be equal to minus 2. See, this was a rough estimation that we obtained for y using decimal values of r. If we would have used the exact value of r and then found its cube root, we would have gotten the exact value of y as a neat whole number, in this case, exactly minus 2, without relying on any approximation. But that would have been too lengthy, and you would have skipped this video. I'm assuming you're still watching, because this method is actually making sense, right? So this means x equals y plus 3 or minus 2 plus 3, which is 1, and this is the first root of this cubic equation. The same root that we would have found using hit and trial if we had randomly plugged in values into the original cubic. But you might say, hey, we still need two more values of x, but this method only gives one out of three values. So here's what we missed. Actually, when we solved for a cube equals some value, we only considered the principal cube root, the one real root. But in reality, every number has three cube roots, one real and two complex. And this is where the complex cube roots of unity come in. If omega is a complex cube root of unity, which looks like this, and omega square will be this, then instead of just taking a and b as the real cube roots, we can also take a as the cube root times omega and b as the cube root times omega square and vice versa, which gives y as 1 plus i. This gives x as 4 plus i. And also y equals omega square times this value plus omega times this value, which gives y as 1 minus i and which in turn gives x equals 4 minus i, and that's it. My mind is literally blown away right now.
If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Also, you can support my channel by joining our community and becoming a member. So good.